بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ہوپ یو آر آل ان دا بیسٹ آف یور ہیلتھ اینڈ ہیو گون تھرو دی پریویس ٹاپکس اینڈ انڈرسٹوڈ دیم ویل تھینکس ٹو دی پینڈیمک کووڈ نائنٹین ایون لے مین از ناؤ اویئر آف دا ٹرم وائرس بٹ بینگ اے سائنس اسٹوڈنٹ یو آر آلریڈی فیملیئر ود اٹس پراپرٹیز فرام دی چیپٹر ڈائیورسٹی ان لائف in class 9. Today we are going to discuss it in some more detail. So let's start chapter number 5 that is acellular life. As the name indicates acellular means lacking a cellular structure. We are studying chapter 5 as chapter 4 needs detail explanation in the classroom environment so we will do that later on uh, when you rejoin after the college opens so let's see the objectives after studying this chapter you will be able to understand various aspects of viruses like the status history discovery classification structure life cycles different viral diseases and about the structure of prions and viroids and the diseases caused by them. The study of viruses is called virology. Now the term virus it literally means venom or poisonous food. As I have already told you that the term at that time was given to those infectious diseases whose cause was unknown. So they were supposed to be caused by some poison and the term virus for, was used for them. So the common characteristics of viruses include number one pathogens This means they are all able to cause disease in their host. They are not cells. They are not capable of independent replication. They can synthesize neither their own energy nor their own proteins. And they are too small to be seen in the light microscope. If we compare between cell and virus, we found that viruses have no nucleus, no organelles, no cytoplasm or cell membrane, so they are non-cellular, whereas a typical cell contains all these structures. Viruses, by definition, are non-cellular or acellular particles made up of genetic material and protein that can invade living cells. Discovery of viruses involved the contribution of various scientists. Martinus Willem Beijering in 1897 coined the Latin name virus meaning poison for the first time. In 1884, Chamberlain, working in Pasteur's lab, discovered that a liquid containing bacteria as well as viruses, if it is passed through a porcelain filter, then the bacteria were completely retained outside and the solution that passed through the filtrate contained viruses. As Ivanovsky in 1892 utilize this test to prove that the tobacco mosaic disease of tobacco plant that was caused by viruses and not bacteria as the filtrate containing extract from tobacco mosaic a disease infected plant was passed through the porcelain filter uh, Since, the, since it was thought by Ivanovsky that bacteria were responsible for this disease, so he hypothesized that the filtrate must not be able to cause disease in the fresh host. But the result was very shocking and it was found out that the filtrate still was capable of producing disease and the new host proving that 
the disease was caused by a virus and not a bacteria. In 1935, Stanley discovered this agent after crystallization. Characteristics of viruses are both living as well as non-living. Living characteristics include viruses occur in different varieties or strains just like many other living things. They have their own genetic material that is DNA or RNA which can undergo mutation just like the DNA or RNA of higher animals or all other organisms. They can reproduce by utilizing metabolic machinery of the host. They get destroyed by ultraviolet rays. Now non-living characteristics include viruses lack cellular structure means they don't have any enzyme coenzyme system so they do not have metabolic activity of their own they can be crystallized and stored in bottles so they can remain active but in the uh, dormant form outside the body of the host for long periods of time and they do not respire general structure of virus virus is composed of two parts outer part is coat and the inner part is coal coat is the protective part which is further composed of two parts capsid which is protein in nature and envelope which is not found in all viruses is lipoprotein in nature coal is the inner part which contains genome that is DNA or RNA and various proteins which are enzymes to facilitate the action of virus in the body of the host. So you can see the generalized structure of virus in this figure that a virus is composed of outer envelope if it's, if it's an enveloped virus an envelope is composed of a lipid bilayer with spikes studied in it Spikes represent glycoproteins. Inside the envelope you find capsid, which is composed of many capsomeres, which are the repeating units of capsid. Inside the capsid you see nucleic acid, which is the core. In this case it is DNA. Now what is virion? Virion is fully formed virus that is able to establish an infection in a host cell. So it means virion is a fully infectious viral particle. Parts of a virion are coat and the core as we have already discussed. So coat is composed of capsid and envelope. Whereas envelope is found only in 13 out of the 20 families of animal viruses and a virus without an envelope is called naked virus. Now the viral capsid, what are its features? It is constructed from identical subunits called capsomeres made up of protein molecules. Number of capsomeres in a capsid is variable in different Viruses, like in adenoviruses, it is 252, and in herpes virus, it is 162. Two different forms of symmetry in capsids are found, and you can see these two different forms in the next video. The two forms are helical and icosahedral. Helical form is that in which the capsomeres are arranged in a hollow coil that appears rod shaped. Whereas icosahedral symmetry is that in which the capsid is composed of capsomeres arranged in 20 triangles. So now watch this movie. driving around on the road, you see all sorts of different types of vehicles. 
You've got SUVs, minivans, pickups, motorcycles, and 18-wheelers. In the end, they are all a type of vehicle regardless of their shape, size, and color. Likewise, viruses have many different shapes as well, and some of their shapes are unique to certain viruses and the things they infect. These shapes aren't just for looks. Like certain types of automobiles, they actually confer a function. Before we get to the nitty gritty of this lesson, I'd like to point something out. The protective protein shell of each virus is called a capsid. This capsid is made up of protein subunits called capsomeres, which are in turn made of subunits called protomers. With that in mind, one type of car driving around in the viral world is known as a helical virus. This is a virus that has its capsid shaped into a filamentous or rod-shaped structure. This type of shape has a central cavity that encloses its nucleic acid. Some of these viruses are short, like a two-door car, while others are very long, like an 18-wheeler. Furthermore, many allow for a lot of flexibility or a lot of rigidity, depending on how the capsomeres are arranged. Another type of vehicle shape for transporting viral nucleic acids is called icosahedral. An icosahedral virus is a virus consisting of identical subunits that make up equilateral triangles that are in turn arranged in a symmetrical fashion. A special type of icosahedral shape, called a prolate, is a variant of the icosahedral viral shape and is found in bacteriophages. A lot of viruses are either helical or icosahedral in shape. Many animal viruses, which include those that infect humans, are icosahedral in shape. The icosahedral shape has been shown to be the most optimal way of forming a viral capsid for numerous reasons, but namely due to the fact that it provides the virus with a very stable shape with a lot of room inside for the storage of its passenger, the nucleic acid. In addition, because the protein subunits that make up the shape are identical, the virus doesn't have to waste a lot of its genome on encoding many different kinds of proteins for its capsid. This leads to conservation of energy and genetic economy. You can sort of liken this shape to the hybrid cars that have the highest fuel economy on the road and therefore save a lot of energy when driving about. Some people apply car wax to the outside of their car for an added layer of protection. Likewise, some viruses like to give themselves an additional layer as well. Although this additional layer is not so much for protection, but more for ease of infection. These viruses are called enveloped and are viruses that have a lipid bilayer around their protein capsid. This lipid bilayer is derived from the host cell's outer membrane or an internal membrane like the endoplasmic reticulum or the nuclear membrane. The viral membrane isn't just made up of fat, the lipids. It also has special proteins called glycoproteins coded for by the viral genome. The glycoproteins are really important in helping the virus infect another cell or host and in helping the virus avoid detection by your immune system, which is trying to kill the virus. There are many different types of glycoproteins, and this type of specificity allows viruses to infect only the cells they need to. In addition, these glycoproteins can literally be shed by the viruses in order to throw the antibodies who are trying to kill them off course. Kind of like when military planes use flares to throw off heat-seeking missiles. In addition to adding a layer of wax to the car, some people like to really spice things up and add all sorts of add-ons to give their cars some kind of edge. This is no different with our viruses, as some of them have a complex shape. This is a virus that has a combination of shapes arranged in a symmetrical or asymmetrical fashion. For example, some viruses may have a prolate head with a long tail. Or
When you're driving around on the road, you see all sorts of different types of vehicles. You've got a long tail or even multiple tails. Well, now that it's the tail end of this lesson, let's simplify the main points. A helical virus is a virus that has a capsid shaped in a filamentous or rod shaped structure that has a central cavity that encloses its nucleic acid. An icosahedral virus is a virus consisting of identical subunits that make up equilateral triangles that are in turn arranged in a symmetrical fashion. A special type of icosahedral shape called a prolate is a variant of the icosahedral viral shape and is found in bacterial phages. Some viruses, regardless of their protein capsid shape, are enveloped and are viruses that have a lipid bilayer around their capsid. Finally, some viruses have a complex shape. This is when a virus has a combination of shapes arranged in a symmetrical or asymmetrical fashion. Let's see the structure of some model viruses. First of all, the structure of bacteriophage. You have studied the structure of bacteriophage in class 9 too, so you must be familiar with it. It's a tadpole shaped virus. It has a head and a tail. Head is capsid. It encloses a nucleic acid code that is DNA. Below the head, you see a collar and just beneath the collar there is tail tail is composed of a contractile sheath which is made up of protein at the base of the tail there is base plate with spikes or tail fibers spikes and tail fibers now just beneath the base plate at the end of the core tube there is an enzyme which is called lysozyme and that is used for the penetration into the body of the host cell. Next is human immunodeficiency virus. That is the virus which causes AIDS. That is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. It attacks human T lymphocyte cells. And you can see the structure. It has an outer envelope with spikes and there are two types of proteins embedded in the envelope one is called GP120 that is glycoprotein 120 and the other is glycoprotein 41 glycoprotein 120 is used for the attachment to the body of the host whereas GP41 is used for the cell fusion process inside the envelope you find a matrix protein then uh, inside the matrix protein shell you find capsid which is somewhat conical in shape inside the capsid there are two RNA molecules this is the genome of the virus in addition to the RNA strands there is enzyme reverse transcriptase its name is reverse transcriptase and it is as it is involved in the reverse transcription. Reverse transcription means that is the formation of DNA from RNA. So this virus has the ability to convert its genome from RNA into DNA. In addition to the reverse transcriptase, there are other enzymes too like protease, integrase. The role of these enzymes uh, will be discussed in the life cycle of this virus, inshallah. Next is the influenza virus. It has three types, A, B, and C. It is again an enveloped virus. So you can see the spikes as well as the uh, capsid. The shape of the coronavirus is also shown here. So it is also a type of flu virus. So inside you find the core, which is RNA genome. Influenza virus causes flu in its host. Next is the classification of viruses. Classification 
of virus involves different criteria for example maybe the type of the host or it may be the phenotypic characteristics like morphology nucleic acid type whether it is rna or dna mode of replication uh, host organism like plant viruses animal viruses bacterial viruses etc type of disease they cause accordingly they are deemed or classified Baltimore system of classification that is given in the side information on page number 134 of your book. You can see David Baltimore, a Nobel Prize winning biologist, devised this system of classification. It places viruses into one of the seven groups. The groups are designated by Roman numeral 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it is based upon the genome uh, type and mode of replication. Now, classification based upon hosts include animal viruses. So, you can see animal viruses cause different diseases in animals. For example, foot and mouth disease in animals, Rouse sarcoma disease causing cancer in animals. Uh, it's an oncovirus. This Rouse sarcoma virus is known as oncovirus. Oncovirus is the virus that causes cancer. Papova virus causes warts. In plant viruses, you can see the examples of TMV, potato yellow dwarf virus. Bacteriophages are the viruses which infect bacteria. This is bacteriophage. These are plant viruses. These are animal viruses, different types. Now, classification of viruses based upon the structure. Firstly, on the basis of capsid, helical ro rod-like, as in TMV, polyhedral capsid with glycoprotein spike at each vertex, like adenovirus, outer envelope studded with spikes may be found, less like in influenza virus, Complex capsid consisting of polyhedral head and a tail apparatus, just like bacteriophage. Now, classification of viruses on the basis of genome may be double stranded DNA viruses, for example, pox virus, which causes smallpox or cowpox. Single stranded DNA viruses like parvo virus that causes mild rash in animals. Double stranded RNA virus, example is rio virus that causes diarrhea. Single stranded RNA viruses serves as messenger RNA. For example, toga virus that causes uh, measles, German measles. Rubella virus is the example single-stranded RNA that acts as a template for messenger RNA synthesis. For example, orthomyxovirus example is influenza. Single-stranded RNA that acts as a template for DNA synthesis and the best example is retrovirus that is HIV, human immune deficiency virus. Next, we will see the parasitic nature of virus. What are the requirements of the virus to adapt to the parasitic mode of life? Parasites, uh, they are, uh, viruses are obligate intracellular parasites. You already know that. They are highly specific to the host. The specificity of attachment determines the host range. Some have narrow host range, some have wider host range. Some viruses even specialized in a particular tissue like the uh, polio virus can enter the cells of only humans and other primates whereas rabies virus that can enter the all the mammalian cells viruses must require host cell to complete life cycle that is the requirement for, for the viruses that they need a host to complete their life cycle because outside the host cell 
they are acellular they are non living thing since they are obligate intracellular parasites so cannot multiply outside the living cells and they lack metabolic enzymes ribosomes etc for making proteins so they are totally dependent upon their host for replication for multiplication survival of virus inside the host cell depends upon the response of virus to the host immune system so how do they res um, respond they may respond by blocking complement activation what is complement activation that is a step in the immune response and that you will study in detail in last chapter that is chapter on immunity uh, there are other points also in this paragraph given in your book you can see uh, like inhibiting interferon induced antiviral response blocking production of cytokines or response to cytokines so these are all steps in the immune response and uh, they, these cannot be explained here so they need a longer explanation viruses can pass unfavorable conditions outside the host viruses do not need food to survive so they can live outside the body of the host in a dormant condition they may form crystals just like tmv and non enveloped viruses survive for longer time periods the reason is that the enveloped viruses they have proteins embedded in their lip, lipid bilayer covering so they are sensitive to light etc that's why non enveloped viruses can survive longer now about the infection process now the life cycle of a bacteriophage it shows two types of life cycle that is lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle we will discuss the both types in detail but the infection process of bacteriophages to their host involves three main steps one first is the adsorption or attachment to the bacterial cell this step is mediated by tail fibers and tail pins or spikes so phages attach to specific receptors on the bacterial cell so without these specific receptors on the bacterial cell wall phages cannot attach to them second step is penetration so the binding of phage to the bacterium results in the contraction of sheath and release of lysozyme that digest the portion of bacterial envelope as a result the core tube is pushed through the bacterial envelope this insertion is called penetration last step is genome injection the penetration of core that results into the injection of viral dna into the bacterial cytoplasm so the remainder of the phage remains on the outside of the bacterium and is discarded later on when we study the replication of bacteriophage in lytic cycle we found out that the bacteriophage that performs lytic cycle is called lytic phage or virulent phage because it immediately causes lysis of its host after its own multiplication it develops master slave relationship with the host cell because host genomic dna is immediately disintegrated by the virally encoded dna digesting enzymes that is dnas viral dna is already undergone certain chemical modification so such enzymes do not affect the disintegration of host dna enables the viral dna to take over the control of the whole metabolic machinery of the host in lytic cycle the subsequent steps are synthesis assembly maturation lysis and release temperate phages are those in which the phage genome integrates into the host dna and it causes lysogeny 
so that will be studied in the next topic so in the life cycle complete life cycle of a bacteriophage you can observe that two phases are two types or two phases are shown in the life cycle one is called the lytic cycle the other is called lysogenic cycle so let's begin with the step which is in which the phage attaches to the receptor on another bacterial cell wall penetrates it and inserts its dna so when we begin from this step the phage may enter and develop a master slave relationship in which phage dna becomes the master as the enzyme released by the phage disintegrates the host dna and completely takes over the machinery of the host bacterial cell so under the direction of phage dna genes the proteins required by the phage for its own structure for its own replication they are produced by the host cell as well as dna of the phage is replicated many times so next in the next step the phage heads are produced from the proteins which were synthesized by the host machinery then heads are packed with dna the dna which was replicated under the instruction of uh, the phage dna and then the next step is collars sheets base plates they are also attached to the heads so complete virus particle or virion is produced and by this time the bacterial cell wall ruptures or lysis that's why it is called lytic cycle lysis means breakdown so cell wall breaks down uh, it it releases the completed infected phages infective phages uh, or virions so this is the lytic cycle but sometimes the phage dna after its penetration into the body of the host it does not develop a master slave relationship instead it becomes a guest host guest relationship so the phage dna becomes incorporated into the host dna and along with the host dna it is replicated many times along with the reproduction of bacterium so as many copies of phage dna are produced as there are copies of bacterial cells but this relationship although it is not harmful but sometimes the phage dna which is now a part of the host that is bacterial dna sometimes its genes begin to express themselves and some toxins may be produced and those toxins they may cause due to those toxins the bacterium which was otherwise harmless may become pathogenic in animals or even human beings so this is called lysogenic cycle why it is known as lysogenic cycle because it may cause ly lysis it has the potential to cause lysis because sometimes a change may occur in which the phage dna separates from the host dna and begins the lytic cycle again so it's called lysogenic a lysogenic uh, uh, phage is also known as temperate phage or prophage now we discuss the lytic infection in detail lytic infection comprises six steps attachment penetration uncoating biosynthesis maturation lysis release attachment mein kya hota hai attachment mein tail fibers or tail pins ke through phage होस्ट की बॉडी के साथ उसकी सेल वॉल के साथ अटैच हो जाता है आफ्टर आइडेंटिफाइंग द रिसेप्टर्स अगले स्टेप में क्या होता है कि कोर ट्यूब पेनिट्रेट कर जाती है इन टू दी 
host cell wall by the action of enzyme which is known as lysozyme it was released by the core tube from its base plate and that lysozyme digests the cell wall of bacterial cell host so the result is penetration of core that is dna into the body of the host so as soon as the dna enters into the body of the host it begins to direct the machinery of the host cell to produce the things the proteins required by the phage and host dna is disintegrated viral tail and head etc they are discarded later on biosynthesis is the production of phage required materials that is phage dna phage proteins and maturation is the formation the assembly of viral proteins into heads and tails and finally the filling of head with core dna and the next step is lysis when the bacterial cell wall ruptures and it allows the release of newly formed phages into the medium which may then attack new hosts so this figure also in explains this lytic cycle landing pinning attachment penetration and unplugging dna injection so these are again the steps of lytic cycle as you can see attachment the virus will attach to a suitable host cell penetration the whole virus or only the genetic material will penetrate the cell cytoplasm a bacteriophage capsid remains on the outside of bacterial cell whereas many viruses that infect animal cell enter a host cell intact means they totally or completely enter the cell replication and synthesis the viral dna or rna that depends upon the type of virus in this case in case of phage it is dna directs the host cell to produce many copies of viral nucleic acids and proteins assembly so this is the repetition of the uh, topic that we have already discussed and newly generated viral particles are released from the host cells these are virions these are uh, fully infectious virus particles now in this video you can see the lytic cycle of phage the life cycle of bacteriophage t2 begins with a bacteriophage particle binding to the surface of the bacterial cell the phage particle injects its genetic material or dna carried in the capsid of the bacteriophage into the host cell once inside the cytoplasm genes in the phage dna direct the degradation of the host cell dna and are able to utilize proteins within the host cell for the synthesis of new t2 phages first many copies of the phage dna are made the phage dna encodes the proteins which form the capsid and the regulatory proteins which direct their production and assembly into phage coats the newly made capsid proteins and phage dna molecules assemble into a new generation of phage particles and the cell is lysed releasing the mature phage particles